I want to continue shortly uh, with my message that I started last week on rebuilding your broken worlds. Say amen. And uh, uh, you must try and get the CD and the DVD outside there. There are a lot of tapes and CDs and DVDs. One of the scriptures that we use is in the book of Proverbs 18.14. Proverbs 18, 14 says that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, a wounded spirit who can bear, it is not easy to carry a wounded spirit. And you can be wounded by, by, by a lot of things that can happen to you, tragedies, uh, offenses, disappointments, heart brokenness, bitterness, embitteredness, traumas, failures, anger. So many things can wound your spirit. Betrayals can wound your spirit. Things can go bad in your life that can wound your spirit. But the Bible also says in the book of Proverbs 15, 13, that a merry heart maketh uh, countenance, but sorrow of heart uh, the spirit is broken. When your heart is sorrowful, the spirit is broken. Proverbs 17:22. One of the scriptures you use: "A merry heart." Proverbs 17:22. A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a bro but but a broken spirit dryeth up the bones. So your spirit can be broken. Everybody here has experienced one way or the other something that has wounded you, something that has broken your spirit. But the Bible says in Psalm 147 verse 3, 147 verse 3 said, He healed the brokenhearted and binded up their wounds. So may the Lord heal every brokenheartedness here and may he heal every wound in the house. Sometimes if you haven't gone through anything and your life is intact and you are very happy, you don't see what we are talking about. But if you are wounded, you know what it means for the Lord to heal your brokenheartedness. Today, I want to go on with part two to still talk about situations in lives of people, individuals whose hearts were broken, but how the Lord healed their broken heartedness. Uh, we read in the book of uh, Ruth, Ruth chapter 1, reading from 1 to 14, we see a very bad situation with Naomi. The book of Ruth in the Old Testament. It's not easy to find, but look for it. Look at the index of your Bible. When you look at the index, you will see Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. Once you are in that area, then you know that you are nearing root. So if you see Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, then if you see First and Second Samuel, then go up. Ruth is hiding somewhere there. So Ruth 1, reading from verse 1 to 14. Ruth chapter 1 uh, root chapter 1 root chapter 1 verse 1 to 49 it came to pass in those days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab he and his wife and his two sons and the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife Naomi and the name of his two sons, Malion and Chilion, Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Naomi's husband. When the husband died, you can imagine her walls were broken. Sometimes when a husband dies, it breaks your wall. You are wounded. Those who have lost their husbands or, 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 or wives before, it is not a, a very easy feeling at all. And, it, and the Bible said, And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. And they took them wives of women of Moab. The name of one was Orpah, and the other was Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Malion and Chelion died also, both of them. The two sons of Naomi died. Can you imagine? You lose your husband and then you have only two boys who got married and the two boys also died. We are not told how they died. One died after the other. I'm, sure, I'm not sure they died the same day. It's like one died as he was mourning for the son who was dead, then the other son also died. 
I can tell you by this time, her walls were completely broken. Amen. Then she arose with her two daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the, in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters in law with her, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters in law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord hath dealt kindly with you, and ye have dwelt with the, with, with the dead and with me. And the Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she, oh, pardon, she kissed them and lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Yet there are no more sons in my womb that they may be your husband. Turn again, my daughters, to your way, for I am too old to have, to have an husband, and I should say I have hope if I should have, ten, if I should have an husband also tonight and should also bear sons. Will they tarry for them? Well, till they were grown, will ye stay uh, for them from having a husband? Nay, my daughters, it, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted her their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. The story is very clear and very plain that uh, uh, Naomi walls were broken, lost the husband, lost the two boys, and then the, the daughters in law go to your country, go to where you are coming from. They, 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 they couldn't leave her. One left, the other one stayed. Say amen. You look at the book of Job. Job was a fine man having a good time. Suddenly, his wives, his children, his family, everything just went down. Job's walls were totally broken. Sometimes you hear stories of what happens to people. And you say, wow. Wow. Say amen. Say amen. Very, very, very challenging. Very challenging. So sometimes a, a bad wind can hit you. Can hit you. And it, it, if you are not somebody who is a, of a strong heart, it can break you down. And if you don't take care, you may not recover. You may not recover. Say amen. So I'm trying to tell you that a lot of these things can easily happen. It has happened in the Bible. The prodigal son took his father's, took his portion of goods, went to his far country, and then suddenly all his goods were wasted, and he was shattered. Say amen. So sometimes your walls can be broken. And when, when some of these things happen to you, don't feel too strange because sometimes it does happen. But I pray one thing for you, that you'll be able to recover. Say amen. Say hallelujah. When, Joseph, when, Jacob, when Jacob was told that uh, his son Joseph, his favorite son, the son with many colors of coat, had been captured and killed, and the brothers lied about it. Oh, Jacob's heart was broken and wounded. He wept so much that he could not be consoled. They say his sons and daughters. Let me show you a scripture in the book of Genesis, a word that was used uh, uh, for Jacob. In Genesis, in the book of uh, Genesis um, uh, uh, 37, look at the verse 34. The verse 34 says, look at verse 34. And Jacob's, no, 37, verse 34. And Jacob rent his clothes and put on sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And mourned for his son many days. Next verse. Next verse. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will go down. That means that I, I won't stop mourning now. I am so shattered. I'm so broken that I will mourn into my grave. These and many people also in real life situation 
have, have heart shattering circumstances where they have lost. Yesterday, I was talking to one of my church members who has lost their mother. And I, was, I couldn't call it out. I was calling this church member. I said, oh, I heard you've lost your mother. He said, yes. And we said that we were, he said we were shocked. We were shocked. Because she was not like lying down and deteriorated. But she, she just passed on. She was a very strong woman. So sometimes uh, people, you don't expect them to die, die. Say amen. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is that I don't want you to just throw in the towel in your life when something shatters you. I want to give you four things you must do to recover. Say amen. I'm saying all this is because maybe you have lost somebody. Maybe your, 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 your fiancé has dumped you. Dumped you. Your fine husband has left you and gone to marry somebody else. Gone to marry your favorite friend. Is that possible? Yeah. Your closest friend has come to marry your husband, your darling husband. Your sister, your own sister, has taken over your husband. Two sisters, and the man marrying the two. There's a story of a woman who was dating a man, and then the daughter collected the man from the mother and married. They have had, now they have two children. <laughs> the mother came to me and said, Reverend Steve, ne kam musu ne leng megeje. In case I'm here, I can hear him. Case I'm here. Case I'm here. Oh, mommy, can't feel that. No, but then come on, big man. It will be kwashia. It will be kwashia. Be 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 on your phone. Over here, we'll let you end it. Be in for a while. That means that my child, you have come to collect my husband from me. And truly, the girl collected. He said, "My mother doesn't deserve that man." This is a real life situation. Yeah, it's true. Mother, a, 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 a woman dating a man, you know, he's left, he's left his original husband. The woman has left the original husband. The, 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 the daughter came and collected. <laughs> Different kinds of situations. I have a daughter right in this church. I saw her and I said, come here. Why are you looking so mossy like that? Then she told me her story. Her story was very pathetic. He said she had this, fiat, this guy who wanted to marry. They were very good friends and everything. And then the guy just died. A few, like a few weeks to their wedding. And this girl is shattered, broken. He said, Reverend, I don't want to fall in love with anybody again. He said, I don't want to fall in love with you. He said, he said something. He said, nobody can love me the way this guy loved me. Nobody can say that his her walls were broken. Oh, her walls were broken. Hallelujah. Yeah. I am telling you that no matter how broken hearted you have become, you will recover. You will resurrect. You will make it. It is not the end of the world. So, number one, decide to rebuild your broken walls. It's a decision you must make that I will recover. I will heal. They say time heals wounds. Say amen. It means that I will not remain in that state. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. Look at what happened here. First, look at look at the story there. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil. Go, I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. Saul was king, chosen by God. First Samuel chapter 10, if you look at verse 20. 20 let me show you something in verse 20. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 20. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 20. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come here, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. Go. And when he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come here by their families, the family of Matri was taken. 
and saw the son of Kish was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Say amen. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, behold, he had hid himself among the stuff. Next verse. And they ran and fetched things. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders upward. Next verse. And Samuel said unto all the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath what? Chosen. That there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Which means that Saul's kingdom or Saul's kingship was God's choice. See ye him whom God has chosen. It was the choice of God. And then it went bad. And Saul walked in disobedience. Saul didn't try. And the Lord rejected Saul as king. And it hurt Samuel. And Samuel shut himself in the room and mourned and mourned. Many days will not prophesy, will not see anybody, will not go to the temple, will not do anything. And the Lord himself came and knocked on the door of the prophet Samuel and said, how long will you mourn for Saul? It means that you have mourned enough. At a point, you must recover. Fill that horn with oil. He said, fill thy horn with oil for even though the first plan has failed, there is a plan B. So even though you are shattered because something disappointed you, turn around. God has something else for you. Even God could not be stuck. He did it. Even though it was the choice of everything. He did not say, look, Saul has failed. Let's move on. Go to the house of Jesse. I have found somebody there to become king. So if your boyfriend left you, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't fall in love again. Fall in love again. Fall in love again. Don't say, well, I, I don't know, but I tell you, I'm so broken. I'm so broken. <laughs> What he did to me, what he did to me. Everybody does something to somebody. You are not the only one that they've done. You don't want to. Tell somebody, recover, recover, recover. Wipe your nose, wipe your tears. There is a plan B. I said there's what? A plan B. Even before your boyfriend disappointed you, God knew it. So he has prepared somebody else for you. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. When, when Abraham was going to slay his son Isaac, and he was about to slay the son, the Lord said, he said, hold it. Don't touch that lad. For now I know that thou lovest me. He said, look behind you. There is a sacrifice. There is a ram whose horns have been caught in the ticket. Take that ram and sacrifice it. So look behind you. There is somebody else whose horns have been caught waiting for you. When the horns of a ram is caught in the ticket, it means the strength of the ram has been taken. It means that it has been prepared for you. There is somebody else prepared for you. There is another business prepared for you. The first business failed. So right. You made a bad choice. It's all right. You went and got pregnant with the wrong person. You shouldn't have been pregnant in the first place with that man. But you missed it. It's all right. You cried a little, knelt a little, cried a little. Now it is enough of the crying. Take that baby. Go back to school. Look for your plan B. There is hope for the future. There is hope for a tree that when a tree is cut down by the scent of water, he will recover again. Don't let your enemy see you and say, Me, John, on know what it is. And I'm here, Basa. May you not be so. May you not be so. One of my, uh, one of my pastors left so many years ago when he came around he said wow i shouldn't have left 
Because I see CEM name all over the place. I see Reverend Steve. I see your face everywhere. Oh, what a mistake. Can I come back? I said, to come and do what? Say amen. He said, I'll come back anyway. I said, okay, you are welcome. When he comes, I'll look for something for him to do. Praise the Lord. But my point is that your enemy shouldn't come and see you where he left you. It is time, tell somebody, it is time to move on. So decide to heal. Decide to recover. Decide to marry again. Your sweetheart died, but marry again, Keto. Marry again. Marry again. Say they are working on it. Eh? Mike, are you working on it? Because nobody is telling me anything. You are working on it. Because I don't like to see him always walking around, walking around with his hair like cocoa dot. He's not marrying. You are working on it. Show me evidence. And Charles, are you working on Charles too? Charles, are you marrying this year? Have you found a girl? Show me the girl in the building. Who has Charles proposed to? Please rise up. Let me see you. He's not here. You are bringing her from outside. She comes to the second verse. When she comes to the second verse, we know. <laughs> Number two, forgive. Forgive. Number one is that decide to recover. It's a decision you must make. I will rise up out of the ashes of defeat. I will rise up out of the sorrow and the pain. I will, I will rise up in the midst of my pain. And then number two, you must forgive. You must forgive yourself. You must forgive somebody. Forgiveness will help you to access God. Forgiveness will heal you. Forgiveness will pave way for God to work a work in your life. Say amen. amen. Our Father who, has, who art in heaven, there will be thy name, thy kingdom come, and what thy will be done on earth as it is. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Has somebody trespassed against you? Forgive that person. When you don't release somebody, it also binds you. You are in bondage because of lack of release. It binds you. Somebody said, you can, you see, when you are keeping somebody down, then you are down yourself. When you are holding somebody down, I mean, find Janet dark. I said, I said, no, I will go to my grave with it. Say amen. It becomes a source of pain. But cut it off. Forgive the person. The person who messed up your business. Messed up your life. Messed up your future. Trapped you. The young lady who trapped you with the son. Take the son from the young lady and move on. Because there are some people who trap people. Should I get pregnant to trap the guy? You two shouldn't have gone to sleep with her. <laughs> Say amen. So, for somebody needs to forgive somebody. Forgive your father. Forgive your mother. Yesterday I was solving a case. I was solving a case. And there was, and there was fire in the case. Fire! When I told the people, I told the people, said, hold on, let me tell you a story. I used to have a friend whose wife was always fighting him. Always. Sometimes she would travel six months, wouldn't take care of the guy. Always. They were always quarreling. Sometimes my wife and I would spend hours trying to solve the quarrel. Then I said to her, be careful, oh, the way you are fighting with your husband. So, where am I taking him to? Where am I taking this man to? Then, unfortunately for this lady, the man died. The man died when the man was sick and the lady didn't care. 
She was just uh, the, the man died. Hey, hey, hey. Went and buried him. Ten years down the line, I met her. Then I said to her, How are you? He said, mm, Obiego. I said, Where is it? She said, How are you doing? He said, I am missing my husband. He said, he said, he said I am missing even the fight. <laughs> even the quarrel, I'm missing it. I'm looking for him so that we can fight. He said, I have become the most loneliest person in life. He said, nobody wants to marry me. I'm too old. And he said, my children have left me. I am lonely and bored. I'm looking at my husband. I said, oh, body won't, body won't know. Come and let's fight. Stay and let's be there. I missed, he said, I had good times with my husband and I didn't value it. I had good time with my husband. We were fighting. I thought I, thought I was okay. He said, he left me and now I have seen. So sometimes you have your husband, you have your wife, you are fighting and you wish that, I wish you would even leave me glad so that I would be. You don't know what you are talking about. You don't know what you are talking about. Because of some small emotional whatever, you wish that the man was not there. You wish that the lady was not there. But when the lady is removed from your life, I met one man who said to me, he said, I sacked my husband and I thought I was bringing somebody better. No, this is, no, this is what he said. He said, I sacked, he was telling myself in my life, he said, I sacked my wife and I was bringing somebody better. He said, I brought somebody worse. He said, he said, I miss my wife, but I can't go to her. It would be too embarrassing because I disgraced her and sacked her. So be very careful what you want to sack. She, 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 now you take care. You see, now that you see, you're on top, you're whatever, you, you see, one, one man left the wife painfully, went to marry another woman. And when he married another woman, after a year or two, the man became paralyzed, had stroke, became paralyzed. He said, hey, I'm not going to sit around this thing. You mean I'm going to spend the rest of my taking care of you? Please, oh, go and go back for your wife. Please, pao, pao, pao. And left. She went for something new and fell sick. The old wife came back to come and look at the man. He said, what is wrong with you? I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling well. So what's wrong with you? How are you? I am fine. Yeah. She took she took a piece of handkerchief, wiped the saliva and everything. Looking very nice, very pretty. He said, I'll see you later. <laughs> you have somebody, you are not valuing the person. When the person is taken away from you, then you will know. So, my sister, forgive somebody. And try, try, and stay together. So number one, decide that I recommend number two, forgive somebody. Say amen. amen. And number three, encourage yourself. <laughs> Say amen. First Samuel chapter 30, when uh, the Amalekites came to, to Ziglag and burned down all the things and burned everything, the Bible said, and they and they, they all wept until they had no more power to weep. And the plan of stoning David, the plan of stoning David. And the Bible said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So my sister, encourage yourself. Encourage yourself that it is well with me. I will survive this. God will take care of me. Blessed is the man 
that standeth not in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but what? His delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law doeth he meditate day and night. Such a person, the Bible says, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. My tree is planted by the rivers of water. He said, and my leaf also shall not wither. And whatever I do it, I shall prosper. Say amen. Encourage yourself with scriptures. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I? The Lord will heal. The Lord will sustain me. The Lord will take care of me. Encourage yourself. Read scriptures. Listen to messages. Read books. All these things, you must use them to build your most holy faith. Through prayers. Pray. Wake up in the morning. Speak in tongues for one hour. Speak in tongues for a long time. To build up yourself. And number four, look at the lessons you have learned. Look at what you have learned. Because in everything that happens to you, there are lessons to learn. It takes two to tango. You, you can't clap with one hand. So some of the things too is your fault. So look at the things you did. There is action and reaction. Anytime you add, there's a reaction. If your wife left you, what did you do wrong? You couldn't have been all right. There was something you did wrong. So learn some lessons. Learn some lessons. There are people who don't learn any lesson. They don't learn any lesson. So we keep making the same mistake. Learn some. Maybe what happened to you in your first relationship is that you didn't you did know how to speak very well. You don't talk well. So this time change the way you speak. There was something you didn't do right. You didn't apply certain business principles. Business principles. So the thing went down. So now that you are recovering, brother, learn some lessons. Tell somebody, learn some lessons. Hallelujah. We all learn lessons through the things we suffer. We all learn lessons through the things we go through. We all learn lessons through the many things we have, we have, we have done and, 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 and suffered. Through them all, we learn some lessons. But there are some people who don't learn anything. Don't learn anything. And what the Lord can't stand is somebody who is sinking and still very proud. You are a sinking ship. And yet... They are very proud and very arrogant. And very arrogant. Nothing is moving you. You are still very loud, insulting people, banking folks, driving off, sucking people from your office. Meanwhile, you are a sinking ship. And there is no humility. Say amen. Your fiancé has left you. The humility to go to her and say, darling, you know something? Forgive this foolish boy. Mm, I didn't try. But say, my God, my humility, humility, my And the man with It's foolish pride. Say amen. Yeah. I make it a rule in my life and in my house. There is no quarrel in my house for 24 hours. Say a whole day. We, do, we are not talking. It's not possible. The way I am, we'll talk now. I will call you. Come here. My dear. I said, honey, you know something? Leave everything. Shut the door. Come here. What is it? Let's settle the matter now. We will settle it. Either you apologize to me or I apologize to you. I say we are walking in the house and then you, you, you pass me by, I also pass you by. Oh no, it can't happen. We are not talking. Because me, I can't survive without talking to somebody. I can't survive it at all. And, and then the way I live, I live my whole life around my wife. I don't know why it happened that way. My whole life is around her. Anything I need, I have to ask her. I don't write checks. She has to write my check for me. She has to do this for me. She has to do banking. She has to do this. Everything I have to call her. So when I'm not talking to her, my life is bazaar. My life is bazaar. 
I'm totally dependent on her apart from God. And I'm not talking to her. Then we are lying on the bed. She's facing here, I'm facing there. It cannot happen. Because the cloth is one. We have to meet somewhere. <laughs> Whether you are west or east, the cloth, the blanket is one. Somewhere we have to meet it. Either she taps me and wakes me up or I'll tap her. I say, get up, you are sleeping. Get up. Why? Why are you annoyed? Tell me exactly why are you annoyed? Yeah, you did it, you did this, the way you said this. Uh, no, I didn't mean it that way. Okay, it doesn't matter. Come here, come here, come here. Come close, come close. Then my arms will just corner heads. Give her some one or two kisses. And she also she'll pretend as if she's doing some church level, church level, church level. I said, Oh, listen, church level, I've seen it before, I've seen it before. I know where it's coming from. Come, 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 come. We'll make up now. So when I hear somebody say, For two weeks we are not talking. For three weeks, I'm like, three weeks I'm not talking to your wife in the same house. What's wrong with you? Three weeks we are not talking. Eh, for one month now, nobody touch anybody. So I say, how do you live? How do you live? Because now, me, me, when I'm bathing, I'm talking to her. When she's bathing, she's talking to me. This morning, she was bathing. I was shaving. We were talking. As we are dressing and putting our uh, makeup and perfume, as I'm doing my whatever, wearing my, I say, how do you see? Somebody bought me this chain yesterday from America. I said, what do you think? This is silver. This is gold. He said, oh, but there is silver in the gold. So wear it. So she has to look. I said, look, tell me honestly. Is it okay? He said, it's okay. I said, okay. Once you say it's okay, it's okay. Then I wear it. So I can't imagine I'm not talking to her in the morning because our wardrobe is one. Everything, our towel is one. We use one towel. We are all using the towel. We don't brush it one teeth, but we, this is the sink, this is my sink. I'm brushing, she's brushing. The toilet is too. She's here, I'm here. So how come I'm not talking to you? My life will be bizarre. So when I hear someone say that, oh, one month in Yankasai, one month in Yankasai, recover, heal, forgive, learn some lessons, and move on with your life. God bless you. I love you.